Hello all, we are Dr. Caitlin Ryan and Dr. Maria Martin de Almagro, and we would like to introduce our new article for the Review of International Studies titled Sustaining Gender, Natural Resource Management, Conflict Prevention, and the UN Sustaining Peace Agenda. So since 2015, the UN Agenda for Sustaining Peace has reconfigured international intervention. First, it has moved away from state-centric perspectives to focus on local communities and engage with a diversity of local actors. And second, it, it has focused on conflict prevention, that is on interventions that tackle root, root causes of local conflicts, particularly in the context of increased pressures on natural resources and climate security. One initiative of this approach is the UN Joint Program for Women, Natural Resources, Climate and Peace, which started in 2016 and conducted two pilot projects, one in Colombia and one in Sudan. The final narrative report for the program pilot project in Sudan highlights the successes of the program as one of the first to successfully link gender, climate change, and security in a single theory of change. At face value, the joint program treats women as agents of change and engages questions of how women's economic empowerment in post-conflict contexts work. Surely, this should be a cause for celebration, right? However, as we continue to consider how gender is represented within its logics, we became less celebratory. Further, even if women were engaged in community-based resolution of natural resource disputes in Sudan when the pilot project ended in 2020, it is now very hard to be celebratory about peace in Sudan. These two senses of decreased celebration about the joint program and about peace in Sudan are interrelated and are precisely why we think it is so critical to take a gendered approach to analyzing not just gender programs for peace like the joint program, but also to the wider gender logics of the UN Sustaining Peace Agenda. Based on existing debates in the peacebuilding literature and environmental peacebuilding literatures, two interrelated questions guide this paper. What does a gendered reading of the joint program reveal about who builds peace and where peace is built? And what might this tell us about the wider UN peacebuilding agenda in which it's situated? We draw on three bodies of literature, all of which have tackled these questions in some way. First, recent debates about scale in peacebuilding have emerged relative to the shift in UN peacebuilding. Scale matters in peacebuilding because international interveners try to reallocate power and resources into a centralized nation state or a subnational institution or traditional institutions and actors. Second, we engage with environmental peacebuilding debates because of the ways in which these studies variously lend support to or challenge the kind of assumptions in the joint program that linking natural resource management uh, is good for local conflict management. And third, we engage with feminist accounts of peace and feminist geographies. These debates make clear the risks of treating women as a self-contained unit and in treating women as a homogenous social category that can be leveraged for good environmental management and neoliberal livelihoods activities. And they point to the relations between the local and international in terms of how the knowledge of women is treated as local and situated knowledge in contrast to the scientific and universal knowledge of international experts. We used inductive coding to analyze a total of 30 documents covering a total of more than 500 pages to examine how the joint program agenda was made possible and what it articulates. We used a feminist post-structural perspective, which enables us to gain insight into what is to be learned about and who is to be governed and what to what end. Right, so what did we find out? Within the joint program projects, Women are leveraged for the unique roles and experiences based on an argument that local women's inclusion improves the quality of peace because they are better able to manage natural resources and therefore to decrease intercommunal local conflicts. But only and only if they are leveraged and liberated from their always inferior position in local societies. Furthermore, through the treatment of gender as contained to interpersonal relations and as something that can be in turn leveraged, the joint program obscures the ways in which other categories of social power construct ideas of citizenship and participation in public life. Throughout all of the projects that we coded, first, the local is almost exclusively defined as the site of conflict and peace, while the global still is generally absent. 
When the global appears in one project, the conflict brought by the global, represented in this case by an investment company, is treated in terms of the Sudanese state's weakness and inability to exert, exert governance over international investment. Aside from still missing the role of the global, so the global arms trade, global economies of extraction, gender relations in international institutions, etc., this also makes possible a peace where the local is perpetually situated in conditions of epistemic marginality. Their only role is to make peace where they grow crops, graze cattle, trade in local or cross-border markets. And second, um, the gender understanding of the local is also evident in how women's inclusion in peace processes is also framed as being largely contained to the local level, but having no role in national, international peace processes. Why is this all important? Well, the joint programs integrated approach has generated interest from peace and development actors and has supported partners to leverage funding from the UN Peace Building Fund to replicate the methodology of the joint program in contexts affected by climate security. An agendered reading of the joint program then helps us to raise questions for the wider UN sustaining peace agenda. To start, we can return to the problem of leveraging. We suggest that this can be used to interrogate how the broader trend of responsibilizing the local for positive peace building outcomes within sustaining peace, and how this reflects a logic of maximizing efficiency more than a language of radical inclusion. We also show how leveraging women individualizes gender relations as solely a matter of interpersonal relations between men and women. The joint program logics of leveraging the local for localized, self-contained interpersonal peace are fundamental to the wider UN agenda. And this forgets about the gendered structural relations of power in two ways. Firstly, it puts international interveners, international uh, outside states and business interests as outside of gendered relations of power, rather than as being intrinsic to the interveners' production of knowledge and their identification of problems and proposed solutions. Even more critically, Assuming that the who and the where of building peace is local makes it much harder to ask about how the conditions of possibility for violence transcend scales. Feminist scholarship can point us to how the conditions of possibility for violence move between spaces such as arms trade fairs and international boardrooms of extractive industries and national defense strategy offices. These are not contained to a single scale, and they enable direct and indirect violence that destroys whole ecosystems, cities, and households. If a transscalar approach to peace is to have any effect, it must also seek to understand the interests that enable transscalar violence. Thank you very much for listening, and we hope that you read and engage with our paper. <laughs>